Do you want to create this map animation in CapCut like Vox Media and Mr. Beast? What if I told you both of those clips were made in CapCut? So let's go. In this video, I won't be using Photoshop or any AI sites. Instead, we will use the Google Earth website, a great tool for creating map animations. You can zoom in and out anywhere with the highest resolution. In the search bar, type any city or country name. You can also adjust settings to add 3D buildings or disable names by selecting the Clean option. Now if you want any location, just set your camera and record a video or take a screenshot. Next, open CapCut and import your footage. If you've recorded a video, trim any extra parts. Then scale it because we want a clean shot. Now import your text layer on top of the timeline. Press the negative key on your keyboard to make the line bigger. Make it smaller and choose the yellow color. For the end of the line, hold shift and press the right arrow to make big arrows for your transformation between two locations. Scroll down and turn on the curve option. Move it to the right to give your line a more 3D appearance. To animate the line, make sure you've selected the line layer. Go to the animation part and choose flipping. You can also use other animations such as flicker, flutter, dissolve, wobble, and blur wipe right and blur wipe left. These animations are great for drawing attention to where the line is pointing. Now it's time to add elements with animation. In the sticker part, sketch, find something to point to somewhere. Put it on top of the layer, increase its duration, and place it at the beginning of the line. Duplicate it for the end of the line, but trim the beginning of the layer because it should only be visible when the arrow animation is about to end. Now it's time for 3D camera and cap cut. You're kidding me. That's not funny, man. No, I'm very serious. Then select the earth layer. Turn off, confirm scale. We are going to change the scale height. At the beginning of the layer, set a keyframe. At the end of the layer, increase the height. Now our camera flies on top of the map. You can do the same process for the arrow too. Or you can only set keyframes for position and fix the arrow at the current location. And it's like the only thing moving is the camera. In After Effects, the job of the 3D camera is this. The camera moves in 3D space but other layers stay in their location. Now it's time to add some effects to make it more realistic. In the effects section, lens effects, add the hazy effect on top of all layers. For that, we need to free our layer in modify settings. In the effect settings, decrease the blur a little bit. Then add an adjustment layer. Increase the vignette to create a shadow around the corners and focus more on the center of the shot. And result is this. Now it's time for the Mr. Beast big zoom in camera. Go to Google Earth again. If you've forgotten places and names like me, that's fine. Use the search bar. Type the location you want to zoom in on. I typed Tokyo because I love Japan. Now hit enter and you'll go to Japan. Click the negative key to see Earth in space. Open your screen recorder and hit the plus key multiple times to zoom in to Japan. Remember, the time between your hits on the plus key should be the same to get the smoothest zoom. Then import your screen recorder videos into CapCut. Drag them into the timeline, cut extra frames, and then scale them. Because we want a clean shot. Now we have something like this. We should add some clouds to our zooming video to make it more realistic. I have some footage of cloud movements, thunder, normal cloudy, and others. Click the link in the description to download this tutorial files to make your own video. 
I imported one of the normal clouds, and since it moves very slowly, I had to increase the speed. Then change the blend to screen to remove the black background. After that, scale it a little bit to fit our screen. Because there are no clouds in space and they move near Earth, we should move them a little further from the beginning of the timeline. Add some fade-in animation in the animation part. Then decrease the opacity to 50 or 70. Duplicate the cloud layer and move it to the right side. Change the scale and rotation to 180 degree to have different movements for clouds. Choose fade out for cloud layers. We can add some PNG clouds to make it more realistic. Set the duration and decrease the opacity to 50 or 60 as you want. So make them small. Because the camera is moving from space to the ground, the other clouds should be small at first. As the camera passes between them, they should become bigger and eventually go out of the shot. Then make keyframes for position and scale at the beginning of the layers. Then go to the end of the layer and move them out of shot to the right and left sides. Hmm, but something doesn't seem quite right here, does it? I guess the clouds need a fade-in animation. That's right, man. That's right. Thank you, sir. Add fade-in animation for the in, then duplicate it. Change the second keyframes to go the other way. Use the pull-in transition. You can find it in camera part. Next, import your drone footage at the end of your timeline. Now, put transitions between layers. Use the pull-in transition. You can find it in camera part. It works best. Change duration of transition as you want. You might also want to add a TV texture at the start of the zoom, but that's up to you. You can try out other effects too. Set the twist to zero and the range to 50 or 60. You can use these two types of zoom in the map for your project and level up your editing skills. And send this video to your After Effects editor friend and tell him Mr. Petty said what's up man. Stay tuned for another video as we dive into another Vox Media. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more content like this. As always, stay creative. <laughs> sure.